Hi guys! So today I'm going to be working on a page from Tudor Queens and Consorts and I'm, it's the page based on Richmond Palace. And I'm going to be using my watercolors for this page. One of the reasons I like to use watercolors is because it goes a lot faster for me. It is my favorite media to work with, but I don't really have time to use color pencils. I know that sounds sort of silly because I am a coloring book maker, um, but it, it just is hard for me to make time to use the pencils and blend, and it can take a few hours sometimes for me. So the reason I love watercolors is because I can cover wider areas of the page with broader swashes of color, and then I can go back and add some details. The great thing about this book is that it does hold up to watercolor or any of your favorite media. You can see I started this already, but there's absolutely no bleed through to the other side. So the paper quality is what I like to call artist quality paper, and it works with acrylic paints, watercolors, you can use oil pastels, chalk pastels, things for blending. You can even use markers, and of course the traditional things that we associate with coloring books as far as colored pencils and crayons. The other thing about this book being heavy quality paper is that you can you can continue to add color to all the pages and have it as a keepsake forever and you can just lay it on your coffee table for people to see when they come over or you could cut out a page and you could give it as a gift or, or frame it or I would even maybe scan it and then turn it into a card on, at one of those online printers and send it to a friend who also loves the tutors. So there's just a lot of things you can do with this book. It's really versatile and it is a keepsake that you can treasure forever. So today I'm going to show you Richmond Palace. Okay, so here's a look at the section of Richmond Palace that I sort of did already. I might go back and add some more things, but let's move on to this part that I haven't really finished yet. So I already did a wash of just like a yellow sand color. It's called Sand Ridge actually in the Prima watercolor set that I'm using. Um, and that matches the original color that I found on the painting that this is based on. So basically I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of darker color where I see shadow um, and that that sometime, sometimes, you'll see I just I just dabbed my paintbrush because it, it is true that these watercolors are quite opaque. So I don't want to cover up all the detail. I'm adding sort of a light wash of the darker tone to add a shadow. In the painting, the light is coming from this way, this way. So the shadows are on this side. There goes the train. <laughs> Very convenient. To Philadelphia or New York. So yeah, this moves pretty quickly, doesn't it? So I think I'm gonna take a little stop for now on that sort of wall area. And I'm gonna go in and just add a darker color in the windows, because that's what it looks like in the painting. The original painting. Okay, so now I'm going to go and add, I have it sort of a teal color mixed up here. I'm going to add a light teal tone to the very tops of the roofs. I don't see this color on all the, all the tops, just on some. The very tippy top ones have sort of a teal tone. It's, it's a very washed out original painting, so um, I mean, obviously you can use your own colors and play around with it, but I'm just trying to get it close to what I see. I do see a little bit of a greenish tone on this on this painting, um, so I'm going to add that as a hint of what I see. 
And I'm only doing this section right now to show you the technique. I'll go back and do the rest in the time lapse. 